Hi everybody, welcome, welcome, welcome to the dungeon. My name is Robin and today is Lamp Working in Black and White, Volume 27. Um, so first things first, I had to have some work done on my mouth and while it's healing, I am, I can't really talk right. So I'll do my best to explain everything to you in the demonstration. If there's anything you don't understand, just let me know. Um, anyway, it's fall time and it's a beautiful time of year, my favorite time of year. And, uh, you know, I got a lot of spider friends down here in the dungeon. So, uh, yeah, I've been thinking about them and I thought I'd just make a spider web just to see, um, how it would look. And I, I, this isn't something that you can just look up and, oh, there's a spider web. I couldn't find anything like that. So I had to kind of make it up as I went along. And this is what I came up with. Um, I hope you enjoy this and give it a try. It's perfect for um, practicing with your stringers. And uh, as you will see, um, I'm not the best at it, but I am working on it. <laughs> okay. On that note, you guys, thanks so much for watching. And I appreciate you guys um, bearing with my voice. Um, let's get on with it. And uh, we'll see you all next time in the dungeon. <laughs> all right, here we go. I want to start this out by making a white filigrana cane or stringer. So I have my white and I'm going to add clear all the way around it. If you want it a little bit thinner, then add a little bit more clear uh, around the white. You, I'm just doing one um, pretty much coating of clear on this, starting from the top, working my way down to the bottom. And what I will do then is just heat everything in real nice and then just pinch the very tip off so the clear and the color are all uniformly meeting at one end. And then you can go ahead and attach your punty. And then we will just heat everything up real nice into a little ball until we can take off the white end. And then we'll do the same thing we did on the other side. We'll just pull out a little bit so you know that you have a nice even um, coating of clear and white from one side to the other. And then we'll just add the other punty here. Make sure you don't push those punties in for too far. Um, you don't want them to be in all of your glass when you pull it out. So I am going to just pull this out nice and evenly. Give it a really good stretch. I want to have as much cane as I can have. Um, I made a few of these just to make sure I had enough for what I needed. Any breaks or mess ups, you want to make sure you have plenty of this cane. Okay, so I broke that down to, into a couple pieces and set them aside. And now we're going to start the, the base bead. I'm going to add about an inch of black on my mandrel, my usual MO for, for my demo beads. I like to make them big so you can see them real well. And uh, I don't know, a, a larger format is always fun for me. Um, I just tend to push myself to the limit, I guess. <laughs> so I'm adding the black, trying to stretch it over that mandrel a little at a time. Be careful not to trap any bubbles while you um, add the glass and then I'm just going to heat everything up and roll it out. So I have a really nice, um, base bead to work off of. Make sure my ends are nice and even. And, uh, now we can continue building up the bead. And I build my beads up different every time. Sometimes I'm very sloppy. Sometimes I'm a little bit more um, neat about it. <laughs> this time I am adding um, just five wraps, nice and evenly. Try not to get them touching each other. If you do though, that's okay. If you, you know, decide to build your bead up this way. Um, and then I'll add uh, another wrap on top of those wraps. So I have two wraps on each um, little disc. 
And then depending on the shape of the initial or the final bead, I might add a little bit more like on this one in particular, I will add an extra wrap to the center because I want it a little wider in the middle. And after that, I'm going to melt it all down, but definitely build up the bead any way that you find the most comfortable. All right, so once everything is nice and hot, I'm just going to shape it up a little bit. Make sure it's a fairly even shape. And then I am going to use the tabulator today. I have my little uh, press ready to go in the up position. And all I wanna do now is heat the glass up as much as I can. I don't want to get it soupy hot though. I, I just want it to be able to move very easily. If you get it too hot, it can come out of center and the mandrel can be floating around in there and you're not exactly sure where it is. It might be uh, too close to the edge of the glass. So I'm gonna put it in the tabulator and just press down. And then I have a really nice tabular shaped bead. Uh, at this point, and of course you can do this anyway, you just press the bead down with whatever tool, you can use a, a flattener like I'm doing here. I want it a little bit thinner. And at this point I want to give the, the um, I want to fire polish it really nice on both sides. And now we are ready to add our first pattern and it's okay <laughs> I have to laugh at myself when I see this because oh gosh you guys I'm so sloppy I am not the best at stringer work so as you can see here there are areas when I have my uh, flame right next to the stringer where the stringer gets a little too hot I get a little out of control <laughs> but I am doing my best just to make a nice big spiral. I don't want to start in the very center of the bead. I want to start with a little bit of uh, darkness in the very center, but I'm doing my best just to get uh, the whole thing spiraled up on there. Of course, it is not perfect, but the beauty of this bead is that it doesn't have to be perfect. That's what I like about this. Um, I will heat it up and press it down a little bit. So when I'm working on the other side, I am not worried about any of that design popping off. Okay, watch this. This is like out of control. I had to laugh, <laughs> seriously. You know, if I can do it, you can do it. It was a little difficult. If you break your cane, just start where you ended and continue. I know this is not the most professional spiral. But uh, like I said, it works. It worked for me. So I'm, I'm just gonna keep doing what I do, but this is a great way to practice getting better. Okay, all I need to do now is just flatten both sides down just a little bit. And at this point, I am using a borosilicate um, little bit of glass. I'm gonna use some boro here, okay? It is a boro stringer. And that is going to help me to pull each one of these little areas down. So I am spot heating on the bottom half of the bead. And I'm going to gently, gently pull out from the center to the outside. Make sure you go the whole length. I'm not, uh, I'm just giving it some more space and now I'm going to do the other side from the center to the outer side, heating up just that one little area that you need to pull. That's really important. And uh, I will go from one side of the bead to the other side. So everything kind of maintains a nice heat. And then I will go in between some of these areas and uh, continue adding where I need to or pulling where I need to. So I'm almost done with this bottom half and then I am going to turn my mandrel around and I'll do the same pattern to the other side. Using a boro punty really helps me out. Every now and then after I make a pull, I will dip it in water 
and then make sure that it's a little warm and doesn't pop off when I'm ready to do the next pull. And it really works for me to pull downward and, and that's why I'm, I'm working on the bottom half of the bead at all times. And then I'm able to flip it around and do the bottom half again. But yes, the Boro Punty really, really helped me out. Okay, so at this point, once we're done with that, I wanna take the same stringer and begin to add our lines to the areas that we pulled out. This is gonna really kind of make this whole spider web pattern pop. And I use the same kind of routine here. I do every other, I do one side, then the other side. And I'm also doing the bottom half of the bead um, as I'm working it down. And I'll just flip the whole bead over and repeat that same thing on the other side. The important thing here is that when you draw this line on, you want to make sure that you go from the very center to all the way to the edge, even going a little further than maybe your pattern went. Um, it, it looks really nice when you really pull those stringers out to the edge. It gives it a really nice spider webby effect. Almost done here, a couple more lines. And you'll notice that the very center of the bead will get um, kind of bulky with that white. And, uh, whoops, gotta get rid of that. Now I want to um, kind of fix the very center point. But before that, make sure that everything is nice and warm and completely stuck to your bead. And then what I'm gonna do is heat the very center of this bead up. Okay, heat it up really nice here until it melts. And then you're going to touch it and yank out a very thin hair line stringer, hairline stringer out of the center and it'll pull everything together. It looks so cool. Just press it and pull as much as you can. You'll kind of see the stringer um, everywhere, but it makes the best uh, final center point. <laughs> All right, this is pretty much it, you guys. Um, giving it a nice reheat, flattening out just a little bit maybe, but also leaving some texture as well. And, uh, and that's it. This is an awesome, fun spiderweb bead. I hope you guys enjoy. Thank you so much for listening to my uh, ramblings. We'll see you next time.